I'm from the Congo. I was born in Kinshasa, the capital city. I've moved around quite a lot. I spent about seven years in the United States and another seven in Canada and um, also now about eight years in South Africa on and off. Personally, coming from the Congo and understanding um, the situation, you know, that's happening there, it's politically, socially, there's a lot of turmoil because of the war. Um, my understanding has been, since I've been able to, un to, un to comprehend uh, social settings, that smaller communities, community life, are the best way of living. So coming across the Global Ecovillage Network and finding that there are a lot of people also feeling the same way and trying to go back to that way of living, I personally wanted to connect um, to the network and be able to connect to other people through that. I first heard about the Global Eco Village Network um, when I start. I moved to Kuladama, the eco village in South Africa. I was um, very much inspired by what we were doing in that community, and I wanted to know if there were other people worldwide also doing it. So that's how I first came into contact with Jan. Um, I then subsequently attended a course, an eco village design education course, in Germany to find out more about the network. I understood that Gen Europe was also supporting Gen Africa and Gen Middle East. So I thought that that would be a perfect vehicle as well for me to be able to move around Africa and meet other people and speak to them about the Eco Village Network through Gen. So um, I became the Secretary General of Gen Africa at that time and traveled to Permaculture Conference, for example, in Malawi. In my universe, from the perspective of the Congolese people, um, where you're looking at about 80% of the population living off less than maybe 30 cents uh, American per day, if at all. Um, you know, we were, we're, we're looking at basically just being able to have and provide the basic essential needs, you know, starting with food and water, clean water, um, access to energy, clean energy to be able to move, you know, water, for example, to the garden. It's very, the variety that they're, they're growing is very limited. So they're also not getting the proper nutritional value from the food that they're taking. So there is definitely a need for an education, a re-education as well, in terms of um, how to provide for, for one's own basic essential needs. And also in terms of having clean water. Um, this is an issue. Lots of children are dying, you know, from disease, drinking diseased water, but there's also v low technology, low ways, you know, um, that people can learn in order to be able to clean their water. How to build their own shelter, you know, and also how to develop local economies and bio-regional economies and where they can be able to exchange with each other. Perhaps some of the social structures and the family structures are not um, so tight anymore in the West, but still are. There's, you know, solidarity is still something that uh, we, 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 we hold on to in Africa, you know, regardless of the turmoil and suffering, we're still very much closely, um, close family units. So this is also something that can then be beneficial in terms of exchanging with the North and South. For a prosperous future for the Congo, there needs to be efforts made from so many different sides, not only from the grassroots and communities trying to develop themselves, you know, to fulfill these basic needs, but also because um, the conflict that's that's happening in the Congo is is connected to um, to everyone, you know, and also to a lot of um, multinational companies that are pillaging the country and also inciting um, people to, to come in and try to s take resources and uh, kill people, you know, in order to do so. So I think if, if it's possible that Jan can influence policy on a global level and be able to reach um, people, you know, that can make decisions, decision makers, to really get them to understand what's happening in the Congo um, so that they can, you know, the, the work that's done on the ground to support or to, to rebuild the country is supported by peace, you know, peace and stability in the country because there could be a point where everything is rebuilt. But if there isn't any security, then um, it can easily be destroyed again. To see the effect that such a short um, period of time can have on people where we in the Congo as Africans living m mainly in traditional communities even now, but uh, finding that we're unable to, to sustain these communities, you know, we've lost the art of cultivation. Um, we've lost the ability of knowing how to live close to the earth. On some levels, there are still many people that are there, the indigenous tribes living in the, in the forest that have this knowledge. But Jan has an appeal, international appeal, that more people are easily, you know, able to connect to because it's also has lots of, um, it's also modern. 
you know, in a big sense. And it also involves people that have gone through this trajectory of, you know, passing through industrialization and going through the same road that uh, some of us are still in Africa in some places trying to reach.